Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a review of The Folding Knife by KJ Parker. This book, absolutely incredible. I read this book, it took me about a week to read it. I read the last half of the book in the space of a couple of hours because I was so hooked. And the only reason why I hadn't blitzed through it as quickly as I would have liked is because of, of work, but it was an experience. And it is a perfect example of how to do character work extremely, extremely well. I even go as far as to say that Parker's character work on Basso is very similar and up there to the level of Abercrombie's character work, which I haven't said that ever. I've never said that. To me, Abercrombie is the master of characters. And yet Parker somehow has been able to create one of the best characters that I have ever read. So without further ado, let's just jump into my normal kind of review structure. I'll start off with some of the things that I loved and then some of the things that I had an issue with. Without a doubt, the number one best thing about this book is Basso's character. Basso is the main character of the story. You do get the kind of perspective of other characters too, but the main person that you follow is Basso. You're following his rise and his fall, and you're charting his trajectory as he goes through being the first citizen of the empire. The first citizen is essentially just the leader. He's a ruler, almost like a king. And he is the person that passes laws. He is the person that dictates when they go to war. He is essentially responsible for making sure that the empire runs smoothly. Basso is one of the most intelligently written characters that I think you will ever come across. He is 10 steps ahead of everybody. He is very Machiavellian. He is very, he's just very tenacious. And I have to say, when I was reading him, I just loved getting his inner thoughts. The flip side of Basso is, is that, you know, there is this kind of question of whether he is the villain of the story. You could definitely argue that he is. I don't think he is though. While he is incredibly intelligent and quite manipulative and quite a polarizing character, especially with the people that he interacts with, everybody respects him. This is something that I think about a lot as a leader in the company that I run. Do I want to be liked or do I want to be respected? Those two things don't necessarily go together all the time. So seeing his thought process almost on how people perceive him is really fascinating because I think he knows that he's not liked by people, but then he also knows that people will listen to him because he's Basso and because he's had this incredible journey to get to where he is. And it's honestly a remarkable journey. The other thing I really like about Basso is, is that he has these moments of vulnerability and he can be quite self-sacrificing in a way. There's this amazing scene between him and his nephew, Bassano. He talks about how in order for there to be good in the world, he, which would exhibit itself in the form of Bassano, he had to be ruler first to make all the really hard, difficult decisions that a good person could not. And so he kind of takes it as a responsibility that he almost has to be the villain so that Bassano can then take the empire into a new era because he has this belief that in order to get to that new era, it has to go through this incredibly difficult period of having to make really hard, really polarizing decisions that somebody like Bassano might not be able to make, somebody that a good man would not be able to make. And that's one of the many things that I love about this character is, is that he fully acknowledges that he is not the best person that he has faults and that he has done things that equates people to objects and he's moving them around on a on a chessboard. There's just these like, there's just like these little moments, these little glimmers that you get also of his insecurity. You know, he has this really interesting dynamic with his sister. Something happens, I won't say what it is, but something happens. Him and his sister, they were quite close when they were younger, but then this thing happens and then they drift apart and his sister hates him. You get these moments where he admits that the only person that he's ever really truly loved is his sister. He goes through this inner turmoil with his sister because you can clearly see that in one way he wants to show that he doesn't care, both to her and both to himself, so that he can kid himself into thinking that he doesn't need her. But then there are these little glimmers of just like him admitting that he wants his sister and that he wants a relationship with her and that he really cares her about her. And Bassano, who is her son, I do really believe that's a, a big reason why he's so attached to Bassano is because it's a connection. It's the last connection that he has to his sister. And even though that causes trouble for the two of them, 
Bassano being in the middle, it just really leads to some interesting interactions that I really love. The other thing that I really liked is the narrative structure. One thing I've mentioned before in, in some of my previous videos is that I really like cyclical narratives. I like it when a character starts somewhere at the beginning and then it kind of comes full circle at the end. The way that this book is structured is, is that you get the first chapter and it's essentially what happens at the end of the story. So you know what happens at the end of the story going into it and then the rest of the book is telling you how he got to that point. You're just waiting for the inevitable moment where the thing goes wrong and you're like, ah, that's what led to his downfall. And even though you know what happens and that he inevitably does have a downfall, it's so interesting to see how he gets there and how the different characters and how the different political factions are playing against him and how he's trying to basically rule at the same time. And it's just, it's just really, really well done. And I really liked that we knew what happened at the beginning because then you start to question certain decisions that he makes even at the start of the book. And I just really love that. The third thing that I really liked, and this I think will be very dependent on what you're interested in. It is very politically heavy. It is very economics heavy. If you don't like learning about the inner workings of a, I guess like medieval bank or the way that mercantile systems are structured, how markets are structured, you're probably not gonna enjoy this book. It's very economics driven. There are literally pages and pages describing how certain things operate and supply and demand, economies of scale, like all of these things kind of playing out in, in this world. It's a very much an acquired taste, I think. I personally love it. I read a lot of about economics on a daily basis. It's, it's, it's one of the big areas that I personally actually read a lot about because it also, a, it's something I'm interested in, B, it also helps me with my day-to-day -day job. So reading that in a novel and reading it in a novel like this, a very character-driven novel, I just loved it. I loved the way that he balanced the information and how that information moved the plot forward. And I do really think that information was necessary for the book to be as good as it was because it adds to it, it adds layers of depth to it, I think. And it also helps illustrate how smart and intelligent Basso is. The other thing you do see is how Basso manipulates the systems. So there's one example of you create scarcity by buying a lot of the material so that you can drive up demand. It's just like these small little things that are kind of dotted around that are very central to the plot and Basso's character development. It's just weaved together so beautifully. And I think Parker has done a phenomenal job of like not info dumping too much. Because I think there is a real risk with this type of book where it can come across as really info dumpy. But I think he did a masterful job of not doing that. And I didn't feel like I was getting any info dumps at all. And I'm very sensitive to info dumps. So the fact that he was able to integrate that into the story so beautifully and not have it take away from the characters I think is a is a real achievement. The next thing that I really liked was some of the other characters. You know, you have Antigonus, you have Alias, I think that's how you describe it. You have Bassano, you have his sister, Lena, you have his wife, whose name I've just completely forgotten. There is a cast of side characters that are really enjoyable. I really liked Antigonus and I really liked Alias. I also really liked Bassano. I think those three characters in particular were three people who had very interesting, very different relationships with Basso. Alias is an example and Antigonus, they're both probably the only two people that ever truly stand up to Basso. I would argue Alias more, he is a he is a commander and he honestly doesn't give a crap about what Basso thinks and he is willing to tell him exactly what he wants to tell him, which is, is a dynamic that I really like. I really like it when you have like a powerful leader and then they have like a sidekick who questions them and does it unapologetically. I really loved that dynamic and I loved his dynamic with Antigonus because Antigonus was his teacher. It's that classic example of Antigonus being his mentor and then, you know, the student becomes the master. And I, I love that dynamic too. With Bassano, Bassano, I mentioned this a little bit earlier on, Bassano is his nephew from his sister. There's just this really interesting dynamic there because he wants to help Bassano. And uh, I think a, a large part of that motivation comes from his poor relationship with his sister. It really is his only connection that he has with her. So he does everything that he can to make Bassano successful and, and get him to a good place. And their interactions are some of my favorite, especially that one part that I mentioned earlier on where he talks about how in order for there to be good in the world, he has to be bad. And I just, it's such a fascinating concept. It's so self-sacrificing 
but it's also kind of selfish and it's just it's there's so many things that we could talk about that but we won't go into that right now in terms of the negatives or what i i didn't like there was only one small nitpick and this is the only reason why i didn't give it five stars but to be honest with you I've been thinking about this book for a while now and I think I'm just going to give it five stars anyway. I did rate it five stars on Goodreads, but um, it's his sister's motivations. I think his sister's motivations are a little bit surface level. I'm not going to go into what her motivations are because it will be a spoiler and I want this to be spoiler free. But his sister's motivations for the amount of hatred that she has for her brother, I don't feel like it's justified with what happened. So sometimes when they were having their interactions, I couldn't entirely buy into the amount of hatred that was showing on the page but it didn't detract from the overall storytelling so it was just it was a relatively minor thing i think what might not work for other people i mentioned this earlier i do think the fact that it is very economics and politics driven will not be for everyone be aware of that going in i think the other thing is that it is very character driven you know basso's character really carries forward the plot so if you're looking for a really sophisticated plot this is not the book for you it's very character driven you are literally following the rise and fall of the main character you know it, it's not going to be like a Brandon Sanderson intricate plot or anything like that. The other thing I will mention as well is there isn't any magic in it. It's a very, 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 very soft magic system. There are talks about religion and kind of spiritual aspects, but there is no magic system. So if you're looking for a book with lots of magic in it, like this is not it. It doesn't need magic in it. It's such a phenomenal story. It's kind of, it, it reminds me of Joe Abercrombie's books quite a lot because I do think you could probably find a way to remove the magic from those books and it probably wouldn't detract from the overall story. The same with this book. It doesn't need magic in it to make it a good book. It's very reminiscent of like the merchants in Renaissance Italy. That's kind of the vibes that I got as I was reading it. And I think that's part of the reason why I loved it because that's a period of history that I'm personally very interested in. So if that's something that you're keen on, or you want to learn more about, I think that's a really nice way of seeing that in fiction. In terms of what I rated it, I gave it 4.75 stars, but don't be surprised if I end up giving it a five because I still can't get the character of Basso out of my head. I've recently released my top 10 fantasy characters, which I know I didn't classify this as fantasy, but I would probably still lump it into that category. And Basso would definitely make that list. He'd probably make, you know, the top five, maybe even higher, I don't know. But he is so phenomenally executed. I also have a very strong kinship to Basso, there are a lot of similarities between him and I. I like his character, he's very flawed, he's very morally grey, he's done questionable things but then in some ways they're justified and in other ways they're not. As, as you will probably know now if you've been watching my channel for a while, I love morally grey characters because in reality we're all a shade of grey. So you should go and pick this book up. <laughs> Heed my warnings about the kind of economic side of it because if you really don't like that sort of stuff and you find it dry, you will probably not like it. But if you don't mind it and you want to read a very character driven book that is phenomenally executed and that is going to keep you on your toes, I strongly, strongly recommend The Folding Knife. I'm going to be reading more of his books. I do have Sharps by KJ Parker. I also have the first book in the Two of Swords trilogy as well. And I also have a feeling that when it comes to characters, to me, Joe Abercrombie is still the number one person who does characters, but KJ Parker could potentially scratch that itch too, which is exciting to me because I always want to find authors who do characters incredibly well because that is probably the most important thing for me. So go buy it, go read it, go enjoy it. Let me know how you get on. I want to say a massive shout out to Alan. Alan was talking about this book for a while and he kept saying to me, you should read it, you should read it, you should read it. And I finally took the plunge and it was honestly one of the best decisions that I've made book wise this year. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I am very grateful that I listened to your recommendation on this book and other books that you recommended as well, of course, but specifically on this book because it's still on my mind. I still keep thinking about the character of Basso and I still keep thinking about his motivations and why he did the things that he did and whether I would have done them differently or not. And in many cases, I actually agree with him in the circumstances. So anyway, before I keep rambling on and on and on, I'm gonna stop there. Please go and buy it. Please, please, please go and buy it. It's so good. I don't think his works are talked about that often. I'm gonna go on a journey of reading KJ Parker's books now, and I will obviously keep posting my reviews here as I go through that journey. With that in mind, I hope you all have a lovely day. I hope you will go and order this book because it's so good. And I'll see you in the next video, folks. Take care, stay safe, and speak to you soon. Bye.